All right, guys, this is the video. I've been telling you guys I was going to make for a long time, but first of all, before we get started, I want to thank you guys for being around and watching the channel, helping the channel grow and helping me find my new passion in life because this video is going to be talking about how I started playing baseball, about my baseball career, and then how I ended up mountain biking or just riding bikes in general. But I just wanted to make sure I thank you guys for helping me on this journey and giving me a new passion in life. I'll be honest, the reason I haven't been wanting to make this video is because I'm not really good at talking about myself or talking myself up about the stuff I've done and this and that. It just feels weird to me. I just do the things that I enjoy and if good things come out of it, I enjoy them as they come and I just go with the flow. I, it, I don't really think nothing too crazy of it. Whatever happens just happens, but I think you guys deserve to know about the story because you helped me start a new story in life and I just think you guys should be knowledgeable of how I got to where I am now. I also want to share this story because it's a lot of people out there that have dreams and goals and stuff and they don't know if they can accomplish them or they don't even try to accomplish them because they're nervous or scared and this is my story letting you guys know you can accomplish whatever you want to as long as you are willing to put in the work and you believe in yourself so this video is also for motivational purposes and to help people in life that m maybe could use this information. All right, I guess let's jump into the video. I'm kind of nervous because I thought about writing a script, but you know what? I'm gonna just go off the top of my head and just talk to you guys about the whole journey and whatever I say, that's just what's coming off the top of my head. I'm gonna just wing it. When I was younger, I always wanted to play football growing up. When I was, I, I guess, a kid all the way up till nine years old, and then uh, when, I, when I turned eight years old, I went to my grandparents' house for a summer and they lived in Dallas, Texas. And they took me to, or took me and my brother, my little brother to a baseball game, a Texas Rangers game and an Oakland Athletics game. And that was my first time ever being in that kind of environment at any kind of professional event like that. So it was super exciting for us. Ever since that game, I always wanted to be a baseball player. So all the way up until I went to that game, I wanted to play football. And after that, baseball was my new passion. So that next summer, when I turned nine years old, I told my mom, I said, hey, sign us up for baseball. I want to play baseball now. <laughs> so she signed us up and we started playing. And... Um, when, I, when I was nine years old, I had a good season. I was, uh, I mean, I was pretty decent for my first year ever picking up a baseball and a glove. I never played t-ball or anything like that. I went straight into Little League where they actually pitched the ball. So I didn't do any t-ball or anything like that. Did pretty good. I was hitting good and everything. And I said, I like this sport. This is nice. So every, every day I would try to get my brother to go out in the yard and play baseball with me. I would, if he didn't want to play, I would beat him up as a big brother, <laughs> make him come out and play with me. So I got in trouble a lot for that though. Yeah, it was, it, it wasn't good. I was, I was determined. I wanted to play baseball and I wanted to be the best player possible. So my brother, he took the grunt of it <laughs> whenever he didn't want to play. But it's funny enough, he, he didn't want to play as much as I did growing up, but everybody knew of him more than they knew of me in Little League, so it's kind of weird. I was kind of a loner. I mean, I still am, but I was kind of a loner growing up, and my brother was more outgoing, so a lot of people knew who he was, and he was a good player too. So growing up in Little League, he was always known ahead of me, and uh, he, I think he's a year and a half younger than me. I'll tell you one more quick story in Little League before I move on, but when I was nine years old, my first year ever playing baseball, I made the all-star team. I was super happy. And after that, from because literally goes from nine to 12 years old. So after that, when I was 10, 11, 12, I never made the all-star team. My brother would make the all-star team every year. And uh, I couldn't, I didn't know why I wouldn't make an all-star team. I, I mean, it was, I thought I was good enough and it really, it was hurting my feelings. I played so hard, worked so hard, and I never was making an all-star team again, but I was determined to just keep getting better because I believed in myself and I knew that I was a top player, especially uh, in Little League. So I just kept working hard and 
For some reason, after when I was nine years old, I couldn't hit no more. From nine to 12, I guess that had something to do with it. I was decent, but I wasn't as a good a hitter as I wanted to be. So when I was 12 years old, it, I don't know how it happened one day. I write with my left hand. I guess you could say I'm ambidextrous. I do most stuff with my right hand, but I write with my left hand. So I was in class one day, and I was like, I wonder if I can bat left-handed. <laughs> so my next game, when I was 12 years old, um, I was I went into the game. I said I want to bat. I told my coach I want to bat left-handed. So I batted left-handed, almost hit a home run, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna bat left-handed from now on. So ever since I started batting left-handed, that's when my baseball career kind of took off from 12 years old. So after that, I mean, we had it was called Babe Ruth baseball. It was kind of it was like 13 to 15 summer league ball. So after that, I was making an all-star team every year, and. Um, I got to high school and I won't ever forget this. I had my high school coach in my, he was my health teacher in the 10th grade as a sophomore. I remember going into his class and it was kind of unheard of for a sophomore to start on the varsity team, especially coming in and starting over a senior. But he told me, he said, hey, you're going to be my center fielder next season. I was like, what? I was super nervous because I'm just young. I don't know anybody. All these dudes are uh, older and bigger than me. I'm I'm small. I mean, I'm still kind of small now, but I just look at these dudes. I'm like, damn, they way bigger than me. He want me to come in and play over this senior's uh, position. He moved him. I can't remember if it was to left or right field, but he put me in center field and I couldn't believe it. And that's when my confidence really grew because the fact that he believed in me, I was like, dang, this might be this might be a for real thing. I can actually take this somewhere if he believes in me as a sophomore in high school. So I ended up playing my sophomore and junior year. I got all conference, all state and all that kind of stuff my sophomore and junior year. And then my senior year was when it hit the fan because I was so mostly focused on baseball that I didn't think about my schoolwork and stuff. You know how as, as kids we think, oh, we don't need school and this and that. We say all oh, that, yeah, you need to go to school <laughs> and make good grades because I had a lot of scouts looking at me and my senior year of high school, I was ineligible because of my grades. So I couldn't play my senior year of high school and play in front of these scouts and play in front of these colleges and stuff. And that really kind of disappointed me and my family and everything. So I was fortunate enough to have a coach that cared about me and he made me come to his house. Uh, I think it was like a month or two and made me do all my homework and everything because he knew if I went home, I wouldn't do anything. So uh, shout out to Coach Richardson for letting me stay at his house and finish all my work because he was like, okay, well, if you can't play baseball, then you got to graduate high school so you can at least have a chance to go to college somewhere. So he uh, helped me pass all my classes, forced me to do all my work. I did it. I was able to, gra we had 21 credits to graduate and I graduated with exactly 21 credits. So I was able to graduate high school and, and get a college scholarship. So I ended up getting a full ride to a, a junior college in Oklahoma, Seminole State College. And it was different for me because I'd never been away from home like that, never stayed in dorms, lived on my own or anything like that. So it was kind of an eye opener for me and a shock to me. I was like, dang, I don't got my mom or nobody making food for me. I got to take care of everything myself. So I didn't, I didn't actually start off on the right foot in college. I mean, I, I was uh, kind of down. I wasn't around my family and stuff. Nobody could come watch me play. The first semester, you got a fall season. And we were playing in the fall season. And uh, sadly, the coach that recruited me there, he had cancer and ended up passing away while I was there. So we brought in another coach. I, I guess he had his players he liked and everything. So I wasn't getting to play that often. So I was upset about that. And I said, well, if I'm not playing in the fall season, when the spring rolls around, when the real season comes, I'm, I might not get to play that often. So I tried to get a transfer and thankfully I was able to transfer. So I transferred to uh, Crowder College in Missouri in the spring of that uh, next year, my freshman year. And he told me, he said, well, we already have a center fielder that's uh, pretty good and he probably gonna play most of the time, but we'll try to get you in when we can. 
I said, you know what, that's better than nothing, I guess. This is my second stop and I got to try to make it work. So I just put in the work, worked hard. I said, you know what, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a force him to put me in. So I think it was the first or second game. I got in the game, I did really good, and I guess um, my hard work paid off because after that game, I, I started every game after that for the rest of the season. And for the second year, I was there also. So I, I made all region both years I was there. Ended up winning a gold glove while I was there. That's that right there. <laughs> and uh, got um, got in the Hall of Fame there as well. So that was pretty cool. So it all worked out. I mean, I just kept working hard and doing what I had to do. And thankfully, it paid off. And they gave me an opportunity to play. And I guess you could say I got a little payback from my last school because they weren't playing me that often. When I transferred to Crowder College, we ended up playing the last school that I transferred from. And I did real well against them. And I ended up being an All-American um, twice after leaving there. So I was All-American the two years I was in junior college. So these two schools were junior colleges. You can only go for two years. You can only play sports for two years at a junior college and I was All-American both years. So I feel like I got my payback. But fast forward to university, I went to Bellevue University in Bellevue, Nebraska, right outside of Omaha. I mean, it is the same story. I went there, did good, got all conference, all this and that. Got a uh, defensive player of the year, gold glove and stuff like that. But the crazy thing that happened, it was my senior year of college and we were on a 27, 28 game win streak. And I think we had broke the record uh, in uh, NAI was the division I was in. NAI record for win streak. And uh, we were going into the conference tournament, but our coach called us in one day and said, hey, I'm sorry to tell you this, our season is over. We had a player that was playing ineligible. So all of our wins that year, counted as losses, except for the ones that he didn't play in. So I think we only recorded two wins that year, which was crazy because even though we only recorded two wins, I was still an All-American. So that was pretty cool. I'm glad they still gave us our accolades because we did earn those. So, I mean, my college career ended in the worst way possible, pretty much. And we had a lot of pro scouts looking at us and talking to us and stuff. So after that, I mean, we were all speechless, didn't know what to do, didn't know where our careers were headed. And I really had to evaluate if I still wanted to try to play baseball because with my size and everything, it was hard enough trying to get scouts to look at me, look at me as it is. Now, this is the part of the story that I really wanted to tell people. And this is crazy because I never told this story to anybody really, except for people close to me. And I feel like y'all are close to me now, so <laughs> I could share my story to you guys, especially when I feel like it could benefit a lot of people. But this part of the story is where consistency and persistence pays off in hard work because like I said, I didn't know what I wanted to do after my senior year because all the scouts and stuff couldn't watch us going into the playoffs because our season was over. We couldn't play anymore. So I went to play summer ball um, in a collegiate league after my college season just to try to get some more looks and stuff. And I mean, I was kind of older than most of the guys out there because they were still in college and I was after my senior year, I think after your senior year is your last uh, year of eligibility. So I was on my last year of eligibility to even play in that league. And my coach told me, he said, hey, you should go try out for this uh, independent professional baseball league, which, I mean, it's professional baseball. You get paid. You don't get paid much, but it's a step in the right direction as far as getting signed by a major league organization. I went there. I tried out. It was one guy that was hurt. So he said, hey, you could play left field until this guy comes back. So I made the team, and because, mostly because the guy was injured, so they created a spot for me. So I said, okay, I'll just do what I can do until he comes back, and if it works out, it works out, and I can stay. So the first game of the season, and like I said, I'm a center fielder, but I was in left field because they already had a center fielder, and the left fielder was the guy who was hurt. So... I feel like left field is the hardest position in baseball, so I hate left field. So I'm out there scared to death, and this is my first 
professional baseball game, you could say. And first inning of the game, uh, they hit a ball to center fielder, or to the center fielder, our center fielder. He was running towards the wall, ran into the wall, broke his wrist. He ended up leaving the game, obviously, and they put me in center field, and I was nervous, but I said, you know what, this is my lucky break, no pun intended. And I love that guy who got hurt, so I mean, I don't wish that on nobody, but I went in center field, nervous, but I said, you know what, I'm going to show what I can do right here. Next thing you know, I ended up doing really well. I ended up being the number one prospect in that whole league, which was crazy because I only played half a season. I got there midway through the season. So everything ended up working out at that place, and I did what I had to do, and all I could do was hope for the best after the season. I didn't talk to any scouts, any major league scouts or anything during the season, but I won't ever forget this. After the season, I was at home and I was like, man, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I want to go back there and play because, I mean, I'm out of college and, I mean, I got bills. I got, I got a life I got I to gotta pay for it, and they wasn't paying the bills, so I said, you know what? I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might get a job and see what happens. And I'm just sitting around and I won't ever forget, I was watching Spongebob. <laughs> and uh, that's when my coach called me and said, hey, you know, you were the number one prospect in this league and um, the Red Sox have been talking to us and they should be calling you here in about 10 or 15 minutes. I thought he was joking with me because I couldn't believe it. If he would have said any other team, probably, except the Yankees, I probably would have believed him right away. <laughs> But the fact that he said the Red Sox, I couldn't believe it because I had never talked to any pro scouts. And for him to say that, it was shocking. So I said, all right, well, I'll be sitting here waiting. So sure enough, 10, 15 minutes later, the Boston Red Sox called me and asked me if I was interested in coming to spring training the next year. And of course I said, yeah. <laughs> so that's how that all ended up happening. It just kind of came out of nowhere. and. That next year, I ended up going to spring training, got to celebrate with the family and stuff on the on the achievement, being able to get signed by our major league organization, and that's how the Red Sox thing started. Now, this is kind of where it got unreal and surreal, I guess you could say, because I've never been around these kind of athletes or these kind of players, and seeing them on TV growing up as a kid and stuff, and now I'm on the same field with them was pretty crazy. So I get there spring training next year and it's a whole different world of, from what I'm used to because, I mean, you literally playing baseball, but outside of baseball, you gotta live a normal life like, like you would a normal job. So, I mean, outside of baseball, you gotta take care of yourself, find your own housing and everything like that. So it's pretty tough, especially when you don't get paid a lot in the minor leagues. But it was it was an eye-opening experience for sure, and it really shows you what kind of talent is out there. And the fact that I was out there, I mean, it really gave me confidence to know that, hey, even though these guys are this, this, and this, they got me out here, so I must be as good as they are. So that's what my mindset was, and that's why I feel like I was able to be successful. So fast forward to my first season, I was in single A, I was in Lowell, Massachusetts, and I went to spring training and everything, went up to Lowell, my first real season with the organization, and I was expecting to play, I mean, I never knew how professional baseball worked and how prospects and everything like that worked, so I was like, oh, I've been here this whole time, they like me, I've been doing pretty good, and I get to Lowell, Massachusetts, and the first game comes around, and mind you, the MLB, <laughs> mind you, the MLB draft is right before the season starts. So the draft, some of the draft picks, they don't go to spring training the first year they get drafted like I did. They go straight to whatever team has already started that season. So I'm already in Lowell, Massachusetts, getting ready to uh, play for the season. I'm excited. And these draft picks come in and first game rolls around and I, I look on the, the lineup card and I'm not playing and I'm like, oh my goodness, not this again. So um, the fact that he got drafted and I didn't really, I mean, I signed as an undrafted free agent and this guy just got drafted and they gave him some money. I didn't know that because of that, he would get the playing time over me. I'm kind of upset about that, but in in the back of my mind, I'm just happy to be here. But I say, you know what? 
I can't believe they just let this dude come in here and play over me. So I said, they better not let me in this game because if I get in this game, I ain't coming back out. So they gave me a chance to get in the game. From then on, I played every day. So it was I was on and off for a while, like play here, play one game a week, two games a week. But when I was in those one or two games a week, I showed what I can do. So later on in the season, I started playing more and more. And next thing you know, I made the all-star team my first year there. So I went from not playing at all in the beginning of the season to playing a lot and making an all-star team because I had confidence in myself and I knew I belonged here and I knew I could be the best out of the people that are here. That persistence and consistency and that hard work is what I'm talking about. It'll get you a long way. So from then on, they, they believed in me. They gave me a lot of opportunities to play. And I mean, granted, I was an undrafted free agent. The fact that I was doing what I had to do, they found ways to get me in the lineup and everything. So I was super grateful for that. And I got to play in a few major league games in the preseason, which was cool because you get to hang out with guys like David Ortiz and Mookie Betts and stuff like that. Actually, Mookie Betts was my roommate for a while when uh, we were playing in single A, I think it was. So we got to know each other pretty well. And we still talk to this day and hang out sometimes. So it's cool to be able to grow those relationships with those guys. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it really opened my eyes to my capabilities. And I mean, coming from where I came from, I never thought I would be where I was at that point. And it just gave me a whole lot of confidence to believe that I can do whatever it is I want to do. So fast forward a couple of years, I mean, I'm doing good. I'm making all-star teams. I'm doing this and that. But like I said, I'm an undrafted free agent. They don't have a lot of money invested in me. And I realized that baseball is a big money game. And that's when I really kind of, I wouldn't say lost the love for it, but that's when I realized I got to kind of try to pivot towards something else if I don't get this to, to work in my favor here pretty soon because, I mean, I'm playing all the way through my 20s. So I signed uh, with the Red Sox when I was 22. So I'm playing all the way from 22 to like 28. And I'm, I mean, I, I mean you, got, you getting to be an adult at that point and you got real responsibilities and real bills and you can't live off a minor league salary. So that's when I was like, man, this is, I don't know how much longer I can do this. And I think it was 2016 or 2015, one of those, they brought me into the office and they were like, hey, we don't have a spot for you, but you can stay here if you want to, uh, like at this single A team, but I didn't really want to stay there. So I thought I would get an opportunity with another organization, but when I turned that down, I didn't get an opportunity with another organization. So I went and played independent league for a couple more years and I was just like no nah, I don't know if baseball is it for me I love it and just the amount of work I put into it and all the stuff I accomplished all the stuff I proved I, like I, I feel like I more than proved I needed to be or I deserve to be at the highest level possible but those decisions aren't left up to you they got to make those decisions at the top and I respect that I got to do what's best for me so I went back to the drawing board and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I stopped playing baseball. I thought about playing baseball some more, but I just left it behind and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just try something else. And then that's when I took the spontaneous leap to move out to Colorado because I always loved it here. I love the mountains, the weather and everything like that. And I was here for, I think, two years before I found out about biking. and. I was here and I was like, man, I don't know what I want to do yet. And I'm just working at the time, trying to figure out my next passion in life. And that's not easy to do. I mean, your passion in life, in my opinion, kind of has to just come out of nowhere, to be honest. It just has to hit you. It's, I don't, it's, it's hard to find, in my opinion. I don't think you can find a passion. I think you got to, if you feel something, you got to just go with it and see where it takes you. But when the lockdowns happened at the beginning of 2020, I got bored. I said, you know what? I'm going to go ride a bike. I don't got nothing else to do. So I went and bought this uh, hybrid bike. It was a Specialized Sirius, I think is how you say it. I don't know how you pronounce it. I went to a pawn shop and bought a bike. <laughs> And I liked it a lot. I would ride around downtown Denver and stuff. And 
It's like, man, I like this bike riding thing, but I just kept hitting a lot of bumps because those tires were skinny. And I said, man, I don't like these bumps, but I do like riding the bike. So I went to Golden Bear Bikes, and that's the store that I started my mountain biking journey with. I went there, I said, I just want something with thicker tires and just something where I don't feel these bumps and all these cracks a lot like I do with these tires. So that's when we started looking at the Marlins and the guy that was there named Ian, he helped me and the store now is Trek and I still go into that store to this day, but he told me about the Trek Marlin 6 and I didn't know nothing about bikes. So I was like, you know what? I guess I'll get with this Trek Marlin 6. And that's when I just fell in love with bike and I would ride around town and stuff. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna try to go try a trail and see what it feels like. So I went to a trail for the first time and I got hooked like that. And now here I am to this day, still mountain biking, still riding bikes. And now I got like five bikes. <laughs> and I still have a Trek Marlin 6. I just have the newer version now. But yeah, that's how I went from baseball to mountain biking. It's a pretty crazy story. I'm sure there's a lot more detail I could have went into, but I didn't want to write out no script. I'm too lazy for all that. <laughs> I kind of want to just have to sit down and have a conversation with you guys and let you guys know where I was compared to where I am now and how I got here. So that was uh, that was all I need to say, I think. I just want to thank you guys for getting me to 8,000 subscribers, almost to 9,000. We need to get to 10,000 though, so we can do that live stream. So you, can got, so you guys can ask me more questions because I'm sure it's a lot of stuff you probably want to know that I forgot to say or didn't say. So I really appreciate you guys watching the video and listening to what I got to say. <laughs> Hope you guys can take something from it and put it towards something positive and hopefully I affected you in a positive way. So <laughs> thank you guys for watching the video. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.